Welcome to Marathon Meeple's replayability review for Sapporo 1876. It's the late 1800s in Japan and they're looking to develop Sapporo. They are building an agricultural college in order to have educated pupils to go into City Hall. So in Sapporo, it is a one versus one game where you're playing a rondel system. You're going back and forth and you're doing actions with a centralized pawn. The one unique thing in this game is when I use my pawn and I move it to a certain section, let's say I'm educating workers, I get to go first, but then Lisa will also get to do the exact same action. The nice little twist to that is when it's my turn and I get to move that pawn, I cannot go to the same area. So I do need to select a different action, and again, then Matthias gets to take that action again. And you're trying to line it up so that when I take, maybe I take that educate work action, I'm trying to do it when I have more resources where it benefits me more, and I know that she's probably not gonna be able to do as much of that action. You're gonna go kind of back and forth throughout the game doing that, and there's essentially five different scoring rounds that will happen, and once the fifth scoring round has happened, the game is over. Some of those scoring rounds are how you get your resources. So there's not a consistent time frame of when you get those resources so you do need to manage them in order to be taking different things and your resources have different values based on the action you're using them for so a cow has a certain value someplace other places it's completely worthless so that's where going to certain actions when you know your opponent doesn't have any can really benefit you and allow you to take advantage of more opportunities to take actions Within the five scoring actions, there's a mixture of mostly production style actions and there's ones that get you victory points. At the end of the game, like most games, you're trying to score as many victory points as possible. You're gonna do that primarily through educating your workers, sending people out to the university, getting VIP tiles, and scoring points along the way. Let's talk about some of the replayability that's within this game. So I find one of my things with replayability is, do I actually want to replay the game? There's lots of games that we have on these shelves that are replayable per se, but I don't want to play them. Uh, so what would you say, Lisa? Do you want to replay this game? Absolutely. We played it three times in a row last time it hit the table because I truly enjoy the mechanics of the game. Yeah, I think we've been up to, we're definitely over 10 plays in this, and I think we've done it over three different sessions. Every time we get out, we play it three or four times. Uh, so that's something that we kind of keep coming back to. The rules were easy for us to pick up. I think the last time we played this was I don't know, four or five months ago. We just did a quick refresh and we were ready to go on the rules. Setup is nice and easy too. I think the setup is, you know, five, 10 minutes. The production quality is spectacular for this game. You do pay for that. We paid $60 Canadian equivalency uh, for a two player game, which is, you know, a little bit more than average these days. But I find the component quality is great from like the meeples are wonderful. These thick cardboard tiles in place of cards, the board quality. Uh, it comes with English rules and Japanese rules within the box. But I think the really cool part of this game is the fact that it doesn't overstay its welcome. And the game ends at different points based on how quick you play and which actions you take. So I find that you can play very different strategies, mm -hmm. which makes it replayable. You're not playing the same game each time. And with the limited number of actions that you get, you have to pick one strategy and kind of run with it because you can't just do the overall buffet style of this game. Yeah, I do find that, that you have to do it. One of the interesting thing about it as well, now that you're saying that, is I find that in some games, like if I want to play a certain strategy and you play the same strategy, then neither one of us is going to do well in it. I find in this game, we can either do our own thing or if we're both like really chasing, we both want to like get a lot of uh, educated workers out, we can both try to work towards that and we don't really get in each other's way. It almost, within this game, because of the way that you do the actions, is almost like a synchronize those actions and kind of go towards the top together. Yeah, and then your VIP tiles are going to be also helping you drive and that's where your point I guess differentiation really comes in is there's only one of every VIP tile which are going to give you end game scoring points. So you might tweak the way you play even if you're going after the same style of game that round. Yeah, no, for sure. It comes in a nice compact box. So, the, you know, I always talk about my box sizes, but for this, it's packed for what it is, but it goes on the shelf and it doesn't take up too much room, which is nice when you start getting into larger collection size and limited shelf space. So I would say overall, 
to me, this is definitely a keeper game. I'm, we're going to start thinning out our collection. I think this one will stay. And I'm also interested to check out more from this designer. I don't know if this is coming to North America anytime soon. We did pick this up in Japan. Uh, but hopefully, I know some of this designer's other releases have started to make their way over through some different publishers. We hope this gets a North American release at some point. Yeah. For a two-player game, it's solid, heavy enough, plays quickly, mm -hmm. easy to get to the table. So it's one that's going to stick around.